Hey Beeks, it's Mr. Boylan. Somebody had some questions about how to make a uh, map of a plasmid after the DNA was digested with different restriction enzymes. So let's do this problem together. This came from a, a different book that I used. Plasmid DET3 is a recombinant DNA vector used to propagate foreign DNA and bacteria. When plasmid DNA is subjected to digestion with the following restriction enzymes, fragments with the following sizes are produced. Okay. So as you can see here, this first line, this is a single digest with each of these enzymes. So for example, EcoR1, we started off with a plasmid, which is a ring of DNA, right? Um, it's not the bacterial chromosome, by the way. This is a, a small little ring of DNA, and like scientists are using it here to, to put different genes inside of bacteria and things. So we have this small little ring of DNA. EcoR1 cuts it, and we're left with one fragment. This is probably due to electrophoresis, right? They, they put the digest inside one of the wells for electrophoresis and ran the gel. And what we found is there's one fragment of 10.5 kilobase pairs. So what that means to us is this. If you had a ring of DNA and you cut it using EcoR1, there's only one restriction site, right? So let's say my thumbs is where EcoR1 cuts. Now you're going to have one long piece of DNA that's 10.5 long. So what that tells us is that this plasmid, uh, DED3, this is, or DED3, this is 10.5 kilobase pairs long. All right. And then another single digest, we're just using BAMH1 here, but as you can see, there are two fragments from our original circle, right? So what this says is, oh, there are two, okay, restriction sites for that enzyme. And then at the end here, you can see HIN3, 10.5 again, so that's the same thing as E. coli, or um, not E. coli, E. coli R1, okay? But the difference being that the, the restriction um, site is probably different than that one, right? Okay, so now we go down here to double digest, okay? And as you can see, ECO, R1, and HIN3 have a 1.9 and an 8.6, okay, or two fragments there. ECO, R1, and BAMH1 has 0 0.6, 3.2, and 6.7 kilobase per fragments, okay? And BAMH1, HIN3, 1.3, 1.9, 7.3 kilobase per fragments. How many sites exist for each individual enzyme? Position the ECO, R1, BAMH1, and HIN3 cleavage sites on a restriction map. Okay, now these are not necessarily easy. Um, I love logic puzzles and things like that, but I'm not excellent at these, right? Because sometimes it's really just put all your information out there, write down what you know, make some early maps with the information that you have, and then it's kind of trial and error to see what fits and where you can make it fit. So let's try to solve this problem together. If you want to, you can start by writing down all of that data on a piece of paper, and then uh, you have it right there in front of you. So here we go. Okay, so hopefully you were able to write down those numbers so we could start our problem here. Uh, we like to start off with talking about our single digests. All right, and the first one that we have is Eco R1. And what we saw was we have the DD plasmid, and we cut it at one spot here. And if we did that, that would make a piece that is 10 point or fragment that's 10.5 kilobase pairs long. Now, how did we get that length? Well, there's lots of different ways, but we probably used electrophoresis. So here we have our wells right at the top of our gel. And maybe in well one, we put a known ladder, right, known molecular weights. And maybe in, in well two, we put the plasmid uncut in here, right, so uncut. And now maybe in this one, we used Eco R1 to cut it. And technically, when you're going down here, you'd see, okay, well, the uncut, probably a small enough ring will move through the gel, maybe to about here. And then using... Uh, equal R1, it's about there. So what we find out was, oh yeah, we're only going to have that one fragment either way. We're not cutting the 10.5 into more than one piece. We're either letting it as a circle, which might move slower, or we're moving it as, um, or we're cutting it and it's a straight chain. And what's going to happen here is that's about 10.5. And the reason we knew that is because of our known weights over here, our masses. And what's going to happen next, we can look at our, where do we go from here? BAM H1. Right, and our BAM H1 actually had two, okay, two cut sites. We know we had a 3.2 kilobase pair strand, okay, or fragment, and we had a 7.3 fragment. And as of right now, we'll just say, yeah, sure. So that means BAM cuts it there. This is about 10.5, so let's see, two and a half. So it's, who knows? Somewhere around here, we could put another site, uh, a restriction site, and that means that this piece right here is about 3.2. And that means that this piece over here would be about 7.3, right? Okay. And our last um, single digest that we have here would be the HIN3. 
And this was also just a single restriction site for that. So we're just going to have that one piece at 10.5, right? And uh, again, by the way, because this had two restriction sites up here, we would have a piece that's 3.2 and a piece at 7.3, right? So these are our fragments after single digests. And again, how did we get these? We probably ran them through uh, gel electrophoresis. And what this means is that eventually, now we're not ready for this yet, but when we're going to make our plasmid map, we know we're going to have the DD3 plasmid here, and we know that there's going to be a spot for Eco R1. We know there's going to be a, a, a site for, okay, HIN3. And then we know there's going to be two sites, okay, for BAM H1. But where are they going to be yet? No, we don't know yet. Okay, and that'll be after we look at some double digest data. Okay, we're back and I wrote out our double digest data and we're still going to need our single digest data as well. Okay, so what we have here is we have the double digest between EcoR1 and HIN3 on this plasmid and we ended up with these two uh, fragments right here. Okay, and then the EcoR1 and the BAMH1, we ended up with three fragments and the BAMH1 and HIN3, we ended up with three fragments. So let's start right here, EcoR1 and HIN3. Um, that doesn't really tell us too much, right? So we're going to wait for now on this piece of information. Let's jump over here. Now, the fact that we have three fragments based on these two restriction enzymes, okay, there could be something interesting going on here, okay? And you do have to keep in the back of your head, Eco R1 cuts once, BAM H1 cuts twice. But let's go back for a second and just look at BAM H1, okay, on the single digest. On the single digest, we had a 3.2 and a 7.3, right? We'll take a look now at the double digest. With Eco R1 and BAM, we actually have the 3.2 is still here. So what does that tell us? That's very interesting. And what that tells us is that Eco R1, right, cuts inside the 7.3 BAM H1, okay, fragment. So basically, the 7.3 strand got cut into, well, what did it get cut into here? We have 0.6 and 6.7. Right? So that was actually a very useful piece of information right there. Okay, moving over to our last bit of information here. Okay, so we're over here now. The BAM H1 and HIN3 have these three splice sites. But again, we have to go back and look at our single digest to make sense out of this. So let's go back here to BAM again. And now you can see here that, oh, okay, hey. Now this time, okay, last time we still had the 3.2 section of the BAM, and we found out that E. coli must cut in here. I'm saying it again. Eco R1, not E. coli. Eco R1 must cut in here somewhere, right? So now what we're finding out for the BAM H1 and HIN3 is that, oh, look at that. Now we actually still have the 7.3 kilobase pair fragment. We still have this one. So are you catching on here? What does that mean? That means that the HIN3 must cut the 3.2. Okay. So what we just found out from this data right here is that what? The HIN3 cuts the, I'll just call it the BAM, right? The BAM H1, which was the uh, 3.2 fragment. So HIN3 cuts the BAM H1 3.2 fragment into a 1.3 and a 1.9 piece. Okay. So, there we go. We have a lot more information now, all based on looking at your single digests along with your double digests. Okay, still pretty tricky. So now what we have to do is we're going to have to start making our map here, right? We're going to have to, to draw a plasmid, and this is kind of where putting it all together is. And it's a little thinky. It's, it's kind of tricky, actually. You have Eco R1 cut at one time, and you know that... Uh, BAM H1 cut it two times, and you know that HIN3, right? I don't know why I wrote that like that, cuts it once. So now we have to play around on here. Maybe this is the Eco R1 site, 
right? Maybe here's a BAM site. Maybe here's a BAM site. Maybe here's the, uh, the HIN3 site. I don't know, right? Now we have to start placing in the, the uh, restriction sites where we think they might be, and it's kind of just playing around with it. Okay, so let's see if we could do that. Okay, now that we have all of this data compiled, we can go ahead and try and make a plasmid map using this uh, restriction data, restriction enzyme data. Okay, so what we know is, based on our last, um, last work that we did, is that we're going to have four fragments to this plasmid, right? We know that from here, right, remember we have these two fragments right here. If you cut with those two, if you cut with these two, you're going to have this. So 0 0.6, 6 6.7, 1.3, 1.9. So those are our fragments, right? And if you add these up, they equal 10.5. All right, so here we go. We know that we're going to have our circular plasmid here. Okay. And again, this is trial and error. It's kind of tricky. And what we can say to start is, well, let's say that we put eco R1 right there. And we know that there's just one splice site, or I'm sorry, one restriction site for that. Okay. And we know that this then would be a 10.5 kilobase pair uh, fragment, right? Okay, so let's look at some other data here now. Let's go ahead and throw in, let's just say, H, okay? And if we have H here with eco R1, you can see that we have, from our single digests, or I'm sorry, our double digests here, we have a 1.9 and we have an 8.6, right? A 1.9 and an 8.6. So let's go ahead and throw in H. I'll use a different color here to make it stand out a bit. Okay, so who knows? Maybe somewhere around here we'll put an H. And as you know, there's only one restriction site, okay, for uh, HIN3 here. So technically, what we just did was we cut it. We did this double digest, right? And that means that we're going to have about a 1.9 fragment here. And technically, as you go around the outside, you would have an 8.6 fragment out here. So there would be two fragments based on just that data right there. Okay. So now we're going to try and figure out where the heck do we put our BAM H1 data. I'm trying to find a different colored marker here. Okay. So we now have two restriction uh, sites for E and H. And we know when we started here, we said there'd be four. And we already knew from doing our uh, single or double digests here, right? We know that we're going to have four restriction sites, okay? We know that there's going to be one, two, three, four. So we have to add BAM H1 in there twice, okay? And this is a little tricky. So let's just look at ECO R1 and BAM H1 here for a second. When we did a double digest between them, we got a 0 0.6, 3.2, 6.7. Okay, now I already solved this one out, so I don't have to make the mistakes of going through it a couple times. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go ahead and try to draw a BAM H1, a restriction site, inside my plasma map. And let's start small here. Let's start with the 0 0.6, okay, kilobase pairs. So maybe somewhere like here. And I'm going to put a B there. Okay, so maybe this is where BAM H1, one of the places that it cuts, okay? And what would this be? Well, if it was here to here, this would be my 0 0.6. And if we already knew from here to here, E to H was 1.9, okay? 1.9 minus this 0 0.6 section here. Oh, that means that from the B to the H here then would be... 1.3. Okay. So, ooh. And if we bring up our double digest again, hey, look at this. The B to the H right here, okay, B to the H, we have a 1.3 kilobase pair fragment. We might be on to something here. Okay, so we do have a 0.6 when you're talking about E. coli to BAM. And now when you're talking about BAM to HIN3, we actually do have a 1.3. Okay. Interesting. So now we can look at at our, um, we know we need another B, right, a, a BAM site, a BAM H1. So maybe now we can start to look at uh, at this data here, 
Okay, so let's take a look at our BAM and HIN3 data. Okay, so here we go. We are going to look back here again at where we're at. And we're feeling pretty good about this 0 0.6 and this 1.3, which come together to form 1.9. So we're happy about this, this data right here. And now what we're going to try and do is look at the, the BAM and the HIN3 together. Okay, so technically, we're good with this 1.3 piece now. Okay, which is again right here in between, not counting the 0.6 because that's, that's dealing with eco R1, but we're just on the BAM H1. So technically, we have a 1.9 and a 7.3 piece that we could play with yet when you're talking about the, the H and the Bs that we're going to put on here. And remember, we need one more B on here. So let's go ahead and try the 1.9, okay? So what I'm going to do is, from the H, okay, don't forget, we start with the H here, I'm going to go about 1.9 down, okay? And I don't know exactly where that'll be. Let's just call it right here. And let's say that that is our next uh, BAM H1 restriction site. And what that means is, okay, based on this data here, that from here to here is 1.9. You'd see I certainly didn't draw well because this area and this area would be the same. So 1.9, 1.9. Hmm. Okay. Now this is kind of interesting because now what we have to do is figure out from, from this B here up to this E. And how are we going to do that? Well, let's see here. Um, so going over here, we could say 1.9 plus 1.9, okay, is 3.8. Okay, so 3.8 would be 1.9 to 1.9. So that would be the E to the B here, okay, in our, in our early plasma map. And now what we could do is we could say, all right, well, the whole thing is 10.5, right? Let's take out this chunk and see what we have left here minus 3.8, okay, so we have 6.7, oh, bingo, so now when we look back here, because now we're talking about the, the B to the E, okay, right, and if we go back to the B to the E double digest, we have a 6.7 fragment, 6.7, going all the way to here, right, so technically, that should theoretically be an accurate plasma map right here, okay? And sometimes these questions show up on the AP exam and things like that. So basically, an acceptable answer, and, and you could flip these, right? I, I happen to go in this direction, but you could have gone in that direction because it's a ring. It'll flip back and forth. But we now have our plasma map, and we know that somewhere on here, there's a site for E. And then next would come B right? 0.6 away. And then we, somewhere on here, would have H. And that E to H was 1.9. And now H to B is another 1.9, right? And then B to E would be our 6.7 piece, okay? And if you go ahead and fill all this in and you keep working it out, you'll find out that, oh, yeah, we did it. We made a plasma map. So I don't know how helpful that can be in a video. Um, it, it's, it's a tedious process trying to work it all out. And like I said, it's really just a logic problem. So anyway, I hope that helped you out, and good luck making your plasmid maps.